Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the potential draft targets for the Jacksonville Jaguars with pick number 24 in the 2023 NFL Draft. Now, these are just some players that I believe the Jaguars could take with the pick 24 and some personal players that I want them to take with pick 24. Now, of course, I would love it if Will Anderson Jr., Miles Murphy, Christian Gonzalez fell to pick 24. And I'd want Jacksonville to take them, but it's so unrealistic for them to fall to 24. So we're looking at players that I could realistically see falling to 24 and the Jags could realistically take. So no Miles Murphy, no Will Anderson Jr., no Jalen Carter, no Bryce Young. Of course, no Bryce Young, but none of those players that would fall within the first 10 picks. This is near the later half of the draft. So... We got some good players here. Does not mean that these players are going to be bad. I think some of these players are going to be possible, like, generational talents, possible starters for years to come. So, that's why they're on here. Um, Some of these players, you might question a little bit. These are just my opinions. These are six players that I could see and I would want Jacksonville to take with their selection. Um, There might be some players that are off this list that you would want. If they are, then just leave them in the comments and I'll give my opinions on them. I've been doing actually a lot of research about this draft class. I may not be one of those experts, but I know I'd say a little bit more than your average Joe. So without further ado, let's get into the players. Starting off with Joey Porter Jr., the cornerback out of Penn State. My favorite cornerback in this class. Definitely not the best cornerback in this class, but I think he is my my favorite, 100%. Um, what's his name? PFF has him ranked fourth, oh, uh, fourth best cornerback, right behind Cam Smith, Devin Witherspoon, and Christian Gonzalez, which I agree. I think he is the third best cornerback. I think he's better than Cam Smith, but I think Devin Witherspoon and Christian Gonzalez is better than him. He's an eagle. That's all I can really say. He is an eagle. His wingspan is unmatched by any cornerback in this class. He's one of the biggest cornerbacks I've ever seen play at the college level. 6'2", around 200-ish pounds, and his reach is phenomenal. It, it's it's incredible. I, I if you, you have to watch him play to understand. He's incredible. He's also very good at getting the ball. He's got great uh, ball instincts. So, like, balls in the air. He's got it playing in the air. Got deflections. Hopefully, he'll be good at picking the ball off because in this season, he only averaged 21 tackles, no interceptions. Sucks, but I think he will will be a little bit better on the NFL level. He's got great strength and speed, which is always, always a good thing. Very good at the straight line speed. There's one website I'm using the most. I've been doing a lot of research with these uh, prospects. And thedraftnetwork.com has been the main site I've been using. I've been watching highlights and I've been looking at their scouting reports to see which players I like the most. So I'll link the uh, thedraftnetwork.com in the description below if you want to go check them out. They have some great, great scouting reports. So... Some of his weaknesses, though, which is why I think he's going to fall to 24, is he is an outside corner and a press man coverage corner only. Those are his two biggest, like, strengths. And he's not really the best zone coverage corner or off-man coverage, which I feel like most teams are going to be a little bit hesitant to take him because of that reason. Now, I'm not going to lie. I don't know what Jacksonville's, like, main defensive scheme is. I could probably look it up. I run a 3-4, a base 3-4. I don't know what that means. Uh, let me just look it up real quick. All right, so the Jaguars defense, they're a 3-4. And we look. All right, I can't really find anything, but I know they run a base 3-4. I don't know if that's going to affect Joey Porter Jr. I don't know what that means. I'm not really the be the biggest defensive guru, but I feel like he would be a good fit in Jacksonville. Um, He's very tight in transitioning, though, which I did notice a lot, which it sucks, but 
I think he is still a... I think he's still going to be a phenomenal prospect. I think he's going to impact the team a lot if he joins. I think he's a solid corner, but he's not the biggest playmaker, which I feel like he can grow on. Hopefully, he can start being a playmaker if we take him. How, how likely is it for him to fall at 24? I'm going to go with likely because I do think he's the third best corner. And I th a lot of teams are really interested in Cam Smith, so I think he'll, f he'll go before Porter Jr. So... I think he will he will find a way to uh, fall. If he does fall to 24, how likely is it the Jacksonville Jaguars will take him at 24? Very likely. I think he if he falls, you can't pass on him. You can't. I mean, he's just he is a beast. I think you take the risk and you you take Joey Porter Jr. and you let him cook with uh, Tyson Campbell. Moving on to another cornerback, we got Kaylee Ringo. I think he is the sixth best corner. Actually, hold on, no. No, no, I think he's the fifth best. Sorry. Yeah, I, I think he's better than Eli Ricks. Kayla Ringo, I think, is the right behind Joey Porter when it comes to cornerback. Just because of his, uh, given his separation problems, Kayla Ringo gives up a lot of separation when he's not in press man coverage, which is not the best thing. Not the best. Not the best. Because I think we got a couple good route runners in the AFC South. I know Cooks is pretty good at route running. And I know that Pittman Jr. finds himself open a lot, too. Uh, shifty Ralph runners are going to be a problem against Kayla Ringo, but his speed and tackling is what really makes me like him. He's not afraid to get his hands dirty. He's not afraid to bring a guy to the ground. Very physical. And he's got really good, really good height and uh, weight, too. Very athletic. He's also an outside corner. I don't know if we need an outside corner, but who knows. But his stiffness, he's not really good in zone coverage. Not good for off-man coverage. Him and Porter Jr. are mostly just press cornerbacks, which I feel like that's something we need, but I also feel like it's something that we don't need. I don't I don't know what to think about that. I just like I just think they're both incredible cornerbacks, and I think Kaylee Ringo is very likely to fall to 24 simply because his draft stock has fallen a lot. A lot. I haven't seen many mocks giving him the cornerback one, two, or three treatment. And if he's like cornerback five he's definitely falling to 24 if he falls 24 how likely is it the jags take him i'm gonna go with likely because they do need a cornerback and i feel like kaylee ringo would fit that spot with tyson campbell really well just like porter jr would i do think porter jr is better because i don't like ringo's weaknesses as much as i don't like or no as wait how do i say that kaylee ringo's weaknesses in my opinion are worse than joey porter jr's because route, I mean, being able to not be as stiff, being able to change directions well, being able to keep that tight coverage is really important, especially when there's a lot of good route runners in the NFL now. And Porter Jr. is is not that good at transitioning, but I feel like he's better than Ringo at it. So I like both of them. He uh, Ringo's probably my third favorite cornerback out of anyone in this class. I do think Devin Witherspoon is really good. So, yeah, Ringo, I would love to see him become a Jacksonville Jaguar. I'd also like to see Porter Jr., though. So, it's, it's kind of like either of those fall 24 and the Jags take them. I won't care. Moving on to offensive line, we got Antoine Harrison. Uh, I don't mind Antoine Harrison. He is ranked the third best offensive lineman or offensive tackle in this draft class right behind Paris Johnson Jr. and Peter Skronsik. I 100% agree with that. Skronsik and uh, Johnson Jr. are very good at their position. Antoine Harrison is a big body, 309 pounds, 6'5", very tall, which he's also very good in pass protection. It's very important to get some pass protectors for Trevor Lawrence because he's the quarterback. And... Yeah, he's also very nimble. I noticed that. He is an effective, very effective blocker. And he's he's just, he's a, he's a good player. His weaknesses, though, he needs some strength and technical growth. Uh, his technical growth does need to improve. His timing can be a little bit inconsistent. And overall, he's very inconsistent. But hopefully, he can tighten that down. He's also not that overpowered when it comes to, like, point of attack. He's not going to be moving linemen around. 
and stuff like that's why his run blocking leaves some to be desired because of his strength not very good at getting holes open for the running back to run through he's overall i feel like he's a boom or bust prospect where he's either going to be really good for one thing but really bad for the other or he's just going to fall flat on his face how likely is it that he falls 24 i'm gonna go with likely because Skronsik and Paris Johnson Jr. are like guaranteed to go before him. And there's not, I mean, there's a lot of teams that need offensive tackles. But I feel like a lot of teams need more than offensive tackles. And they're going to go with that before going with someone like Antoine Harrison. And I feel like I've heard a lot about him, about, what's his name? Broderick Jones going before Antoine Harrison. I've even heard a lot about uh, Cody Mouch going before Antoine, which I think is crazy, but I think if he does fall 24, how likely is it that Jax will take him? I'm going to go possible. I think it is a realistic possibility that Jacksonville will take Antoine Harrison with the 24th overall pick. I will not be mad with this pick. I do think it's going to be a gamble, though. I feel like with Porter Jr. and Ringo, it's not as big of a gamble as Antoine Harrison, simply because of his weaknesses, the technical growth, and the functional strength need to be improved a lot but i do love the upside with his body type his pass protection and his length so yeah i think it's a very good option at 24 for antoine harrison to go to jacksonville um the current offensive tackles are joan taylor and walker little taylor is a free agent so who knows if we will re-sign him if we don't, I think it's more of a possibility that Antoine Harrison goes. And I think he'll be a really good replacement for Jawan Taylor. Moving on to offensive guard, we got Osiris Torrance. Now, the current offensive guards for the Jags are Tyler Shatley and Brandon Sheriff. I think Shatley can can walk, I mean, can move to the second string uh, guard. I think Cyrus Torrance could be an instant starter at Jacksonville. But some of his stuff, uh, he's very, very good mass and length. He is 347 pounds, 6'5". He's got a very high motor. He's not afraid to get physical. And his run blocking is really well. He's kind of an opposite player to Antoine, as he is very good at opening holes, very aggressive, got a lot of strength, and very good for run blocking. But his pass protection leaves a lot to be desired. His aggressiveness can also be kind of a downside to him as he will sometimes plant his feet very stiff and leads to holding penalties, which we don't want that. His lateral agility also does leave some desire in pass protection. So his range really is not not as there as we need it to be. I do think he's the best offensive guard in the class, which makes it a little bit less likely that he'll fall at 24 which I'll get to in a minute, but he also does lack a lot of quickness. I mean, you expect that from a 340 plus pounder. I mean, his reaction time needs to be a little bit better. I noticed that and just needs to be a little bit more quick getting to the defensive player. Um, he's also, when defenders also often tack, like go for his edge also, it's like, the site does say that when defenders attack his edge, his lateral agility does, um, his lateral agility does show, and it leads him to give up pressures. I agree to disagree with that. There's times where I've seen defenders attack his edge, and he's been able to comfortably um, position himself to not do that. And there's also some times where he doesn't, which again, inconsistency is a big problem. How likely is it that he falls at 24? I'm going to go with possible. I think a team could take him before because he is, in my opinion, the best offensive guard in the class. So I th if he does follow 24, how likely do I think Jackson will take him? I'm going to go with kind of possible because we do need some new guards. I mean, we need some depth in the guard position. That's fair. But I think possibly getting a guard later down the line is a smarter decision there's other positions that need to be addressed before offensive guard so who knows osiris torrance could fall to 24 and could be taken at 24 he could not if he doesn't get picked at 24 when he's available i'm not gonna be like whoa why don't you take him i'm gonna be a little bit concerned i'm like okay you could have taken this pick but if he is taken i'm not gonna be like bro why'd you pick him and be like all right that's a solid pick at 24 
Moving on to probably my biggest wild card out of anyone on this list is Keon White, Georgia Tech, edge rusher. Jags don't have the best history drafting edge rushers. We know this. But for Lorenzo Fadakasi and Roy Robertson Harris, very, very interchangeable players. Fadakasi, he can be replaced so easily. I think I think he should be cut and we should look for an edge rusher in the draft. I feel like Keon White is the most underrated player in the entire draft. Yes, I, I said what I said. He is unbelievable. He's a huge body. I mean, his... Let's just look real quick. Look at his... Let's look at his weight real quick. 260 plus pounds. Six... Uh, what is he? Six four, yeah. And he's freakishly athletic. If you watch professional wrestling and you know who Keith Lee is, he is the football version of Keith Lee. I mean, he is... A do-it-all lineman too, which I love. I love that he's a do-it-all lineman. He can go get on the D. He can go be a defensive lineman. He can be an edge rusher. He could be a linebacker. He's capable of doing like everything. And he was scouted as a tight end. Like I can't. I, I, he adjusted to being a defensive player so easily. But the problem is, is, he's fairly new to the position. He's he's fairly new to the position, which. I mean, he switched the defensive end in 2019, which means he's been playing around four years of edge. And the fact that he's able to already do what he's doing in four years as an edge rusher is incredible. On a very bad Georgia Tech team as well. I've had the privilege of watching every single one of his games this year because my dad's a huge Georgia Tech fan. So he, I could tell you with, without a shadow of a doubt, he is a beast. 7.5 sacks, 8 QB hits, two, 13 out of 27 tackles were for loss. He had 27 tackles, 13 of them were for loss. That is that is so good. His hand placement also needs some to be desired as his, I mean, he's developmental, so he's going to have some growing pains, which means he's needs some technical growth. Um, he's very good at setting the edge and works inside. But he's also really good against the run, which is something really good. He's a high motor. He's very aggressive. Knows how to tackle. As you can tell, it's 13 tackles for loss. He has a lot of flexibility, too. And he's good at pressuring the quarterback, which is what Jacksonville needs. We need someone who can get to the quarterback consistently. And I feel like Keon White is someone who could be doing that almost instantly. How likely is it that he falls to pick... 24. I've heard rumors the Eagles want to take him at pick 10. I've heard a lot of people wanting to take him like early. I think I think he'll fall though. I'm saying likely. I think it's likely that he falls to 24. How likely is it Jacksonville takes him? I'm going to go with possible. I think it is a possibility that he is taken at 24. But if it was up to me and he's there, I think it's I'm taking him. I am 100% taking him. I, I think Keanu White being a Jacksonville Jaguar would be a perfect fit for him. Put him alongside Josh Allen. Put him alongside Trayvon Walker, Devin Lloyd. That is going to be a menace of a front four, hopefully. Hopefully, Devin Lloyd, Trayvon Walker, Josh Allen, plus Keon White. That would be, in the next like two years, terrorizing quarterbacks. That would be incredible. Incredible. But we can only dream. I feel like there are some other positions that need to be taken before edge rusher in the first round, though, which is why I'm a little bit hesitant to be like, for sure, take Keon White. But I I just think he's he's incredible. Incredible player. Very underrated. In my opinion, the most underrated player in this class. Finally, we got Michael Mayer, tight end out of Notre Dame. The best tight end in this class, 100%. Now, I have some strong opinions about Michael Mayer at uh, round one. It's hard to deny his strengths. Incredible catching in traffic. Incredible white red zone weapon. He caught nine touchdowns and 800 yards in Notre Dame this year. 67 receptions too. I mean, he was fed the ball. It was a nose for the red zone. Which, I mean, hey, if it gets more touchdowns for Jacksonville, that's good. He's got great hands, but his weaknesses are hard to ignore. He's not the greatest athlete. His blocking leaves some to be desired, and his speed needs to improve. There's a reason why he's very good over the middle. is because he's a good route runner, and he doesn't really have the speed to go deep. This pick relies on one thing, re-signing Evan Ingram. 
the fact that Evan Ingram resigns, I don't think we should take Michael Mayer at pick 24. If he doesn't resign, now we're starting to think maybe we should. My opinion, I don't think we should take him, period. I think we should use round one to focus on our defense, and then maybe round two, we take a Darnell Washington. Now, I actually really like Darnell Washington, and I think it's going to be a really good pick if we pick him at round two. Even if we do re-sign Evan Ingram, I think Darnell Washington in round two is a good pick for us because we're getting good value and we're still using our first round pick on something that can really elevate our defense or offensive line. One of the two. I feel like offensive line and secondary needs to be our main priorities or maybe a Keon White. Who knows? <laughs> um, another thing he's really good. He's good at pointing the ball well. And so, like, if it's going up, if he's in, like, press coverage or he's going to get someone in press coverage, he's good at getting the ball. Uh, another weakness I noticed about him is, I mean, his blocking needs to, needs to improve. Like, I noticed that while looking at highlights of him. His blocking needs to, needs to stop being so bad. And his size, I mean, what is he, 6'6", six, six, six something, 6'2", six maybe? He's 6'4", 250 pounds. I mean, the weight really shows 250. He's not the best athlete, of course. How likely is it that he falls to 24? The only two teams I could realistically see taking Michael Mayer in the first round is the Chargers, maybe the Lions, and the Packers. I feel like most likely he'll go to the Packers, besides from Jacksonville. So I'm going to go with possible, because... I feel like the Packers would take him if they were given the opportunity to. Even though I think the Packers should be thinking about a receiver more than a tight end. But Packers don't know how to draft receivers in the first round. So we're just going to say they're going to take Michael Mayer. Lions, I think they don't really need to. I feel like they can get they can get a good tight end in free agency or serviceable one. But Chargers is a big if because I don't think they got a good, like an amazing tight end right now. They might be losing Keenan Allen, so another option on offense would be good for them. So, I think it's possible. If he does fall, this is a tricky one. If Ingram resigns, I'm going to go with not likely. Because I feel like they'd wait for another round to get another quality tight end instead of wasting their first round pick on a tight end where they already got a good player playing that position for them. If Ingram doesn't resign, I'm going to go with likely. Because... It's gonna be. It's gonna fill a huge gap. Like the starting tight end besides Ingram is Chris Manhurt, Dan Arnold. Like Dan Arnold was fine, but he's not starting tight end caliber. So I still like the idea of a Darnell Washington in the second round, even if Ingram resigns and using our first round pick on a different player. Now, out of all these players, if it came down to me picking, if all of them were available at 24, I am picking Joey Porter Jr. I just like him too much, and I think cornerback is a big need. Secondly, I am taking Keon White. I know a lot of people would probably be mad at that, but come on. He's going to he's going to be great. Whatever team he goes to, I'm going to be following his career from the day he's drafted to the day he retires because he's probably going to emerge as one of my favorite players. So, with that being said, I uh, hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did please like comment and subscribe if you are new to the channel and if you disagreed please let me know in the comments if you agreed then yay i'm, I'm glad you did but see you guys in the next one peace